welcome back. Uh, oh, yeah. So welcome, sir. Uh, nice to have you on today. Uh, we have a very interesting guest with the uh, Emeritus Institute. We have Gorgi Gonev. Nice yes. to have you here today, Absolutely sir. Absolutely kidding. Thank you so much. Uh, I, I was looking over uh, a couple things that you teach here, which we'll get in in uh, just a moment. But first, I want to talk about uh, your, your background. Uh, you have a master level and a doctorate level in education, right? Yes. And where did you go to school, sir? Uh, okay, I obtained my master's degree at the University of Sofia, Bulgaria. Ah, very good. Where I was born and raised, and uh, I obtained my PhD at the uh, Institute of International Relations, Moscow, Russia. Wow, and how did you come over here? When did you come over to this country? Well, uh, I was... Um, adventurous, I should say, enough to get into politics, which mm -hmm. wasn't a highly recommendable option uh -huh. <laughs> under communism. <laughs> yeah. And finally, I ended up in California. And uh, you've been, uh, be before teaching with the uh, Emeritus Institute, uh, do you uh, teach at other colleges as well? Uh, I spent two years as a visiting Fulbright scholar at the mm -hmm. Ohio State University, Columbus, Ohio. Oh, very good. Yes, so this is my only experience, you know. Well, it's, it's good that you're here. This is yeah. wonderful. My pleasure. Now, we said right before uh, we came on, I was looking over the couple things uh, that you teach, and one of them uh, right now, of course, is probably has been over the last uh, couple decades, contemporary Mideast politics and history. Yes. There's a lot of roads to go through on yeah. that one, isn't there? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I imagine there is a lot of people just uh, often confused, as I am, about the Middle East over there and what faction is with this one and that one, and it, it changes every couple of years. The players seem to change, but there is a, there's a lot to delve into here. How do you ap approach this subject? Do you just first kind of give a historical background of certain regions? Well, the very class combines history and politics. Mm -hmm. So yeah. actually, the contemporary Middle East, which is rapidly changing yes. right now, yes. the uh, contemporary map of the Middle East uh, was created uh, in the aftermath of the First World War mm -hmm. in 1919. So in other words, uh, it was logical to start okay. the class uh, with some historical section, giving some idea about the division of the region between Great Britain and France. In other words, right. yeah. in other words between the victorious powers of World War I. Mm -hmm. Also, a separate component uh, is occupied by the long-lasting Arab-Israeli, later Palestinian-Israeli mm -hmm. conflict. It's a separate issue, and uh, it's also part of the class, so to speak. And uh, the political aspect uh, treats contemporary developments, mm -hmm. uh, which is really um, difficult because it's changed, the situation is changing. Just to give you some clue, for instance, I'm firmly convinced that uh, the, the, the only group which has a future, so to speak, in this region uh, are the Kurds. Mm -hmm. You know, the Kurdish factor is coming very strong, coming out very strongly. Later. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I can see where this would just be a fascinating class. You get a lot of people signing up for it? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. And I have been honored to have students who are coming to my class year after year. Oh, very good. Yes. Yeah, so, Does each class, each uh, semester that you teach, uh, do you start at a certain point? Yes. Or do you, uh, l like the fall and then the spring semester, uh, spring is like the second part to it? Or? Uh, yes. Uh, basically, uh, I don't have any other choice rather than to start from the beginning, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, in other words, uh, with the aftermath, with the consequences of the First World War for the region. Right. right. 
And then, as far as the politics is concerned, I'm trying to update it. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, this is my approach, roughly. And you also me. teach Introduction to Philosophy and Free, and free Thought. Yes, yes. And what does uh, that entail as far as, the, uh, as far as the free thought part of that? Okay, uh, it's a very, um, as far as the subject area is concerned, it's tremendously interesting class, mm -hmm. you know, because uh, the purpose is to create, to provide some knowledge about the main developments in the uh, concepts and uh, throughout the centuries uh, leading to the emergence of the Western concept of free thought. Interesting. Uh, in other words, the starting point, of course, in this case, is the uh, philosophy of ancient Greece, exem right. exemplified by the remarkable trio of uh, Socrates, Plato, mm -hmm. and Aristoteles. Then uh, it goes uh, uh, d different representatives of the Western political thought uh, are analyzed for mm -hmm. the students, you know, like Thomas Hobbes, like Baruch Spinoza, for instance. And uh, then uh, it comes uh, the issue of totalitarian, or in other words, of dictatorship versus democracy. Interesting. Uh, yes, and... Uh, so you fold politics into this as well? As yes. Far as, yeah. yeah, it's inevitable. Yeah, it seems to be, yeah. It's inevitable. And uh, also, particularly given the fact on uh, uh, what subject, uh, what a dramatic attack on the very concept of free thought we are witnessing today, right? Uh, particularly in the Middle East, yeah. you know, and not only there. Uh, yes, it's a fascinating subject. Well, it certainly sounds that way. And do you teach year round? Do you teach a fall, spring, and the summer classes? Or just uh, or just fall and spring. Uh, virtually, we except for the summer when, for the time being, I'm teaching one class. Okay. Uh, I I have a busy load, you know, for four classes for yeah. the time being, you know, uh, for the spring semester and uh, for the winter for the for uh, yeah for for the fall semester. Very good. Do you teach over at Saddleback College as well, or just the emeritus program? Just the Emeritus program. All right. Well, that's that's great. I mean, these are two very fascinating classes. I I imagine you get a lot of people in there starting to to debate things out, oh, yes. talk about different views. Yes. And yes. And also, I have to tell you that to teach within the framework of um, Emeritus program uh, is a challenge mm -hmm. because uh, you are teaching people with rich life experience, right. uh, many people who have uh, knowledge of the regions, uh, true. many people have the knowledge of the issues, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, people with a lifelong interest in the area of politics and history. Yeah. And uh, it's on one hand, it's a pleasure, but on the other hand, it's a challenge. Yeah. You know? I bet it to, is. To meet the expectations of those informed and uh, active individuals. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, yeah. I can just imagine that uh, a lot goes on in your classes. I think it's a, a couple great subjects. Thank you. And yeah. it's a pleasure yes. to have you here. And it's just an example of uh, all My the pleasure. different uh, variety that the uh, Saddleback College of Merit Institute has because. It, it's a, the, the, the different t kinds of classes that are offered, it just is absolutely astounding. And you're a perfect example of that. Thank you so much. It's been a me. pleasure to meet you. My pleasure. Thank and you, And great to have you on. And uh, folks, if you want to check out uh, these classes and others, saddleback.edu forward slash emeritus, you can find out about all these great classes there. And uh, Gorky, great to have you on. It's been Thank fascinating. Thank you so much. Um, it was my pleasure. Thank you. And I hope to see you again someday. Thank you. All right, you take care, and we'll be right back. Thank you.